Three people were killed in a traffic accident earlier this week, and police are still looking for the cause. Area gardeners can pick up free plants, seeds, and fertilizer Thursday, and parents of elementary school students can help find free scholastic help this summer. Temperatures continue to warm across East Alabama. We'll tell you how high they're going coming up in weather. Coming up in sports, one local standout has entered the transfer portal and chose his next destination, while a local volleyball player is committed to play college volleyball. We have more on both of these stories in just a minute as EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. A Calhoun County woman and her two-year-old son were killed Monday afternoon when their truck collided with a motorcycle in downtown Gadsden. Police say 20-year-old Juliana Murillo and her son, Noah Finley Murillo, died shortly after the accident. The motorcyclist involved in the accident, 19-year-old Isaac Trey Stevens, was pronounced dead at the scene. Gadsden police say the accident happened at approximately 5.38 p.m. Monday at the intersection of U.S. 411 and Walnut Street. Officials say speed appears to have been a contributing factor in the accident and the collision is currently under investigation. The Coosa Valley Resource Conservation and Development Council is having an information meeting in Heflin on Thursday. That group plans to plant seeds, figuratively and literally, that will help area residents learn more about programs and services that are available to them. Workshop coordinator Elijah Moore says several groups will be there to give out information along with some pepper and tomato plants, seeds, and fertilizer. You know, we're trying to encourage people to do some gardening and uh, <clears throat> we want them to uh, use the these agencies. Uh, these agents are there for them and a lot of people don't know about them. So that's basically what we're trying to do is to get the word out about these these agencies. Moore says that learning how to maintain a garden can be very important for families who are looking for ways to stretch their budgets during tough economic times. You can look at the grocery stores this day and time and they are not as stocked as they used to be. And uh, like you say, with the grocery prices like they are, you can save yourself a little money. And you also know what you have when you're growing your own food. And also it's a good therapeutic, you know, and, and so it's good for your health to get out and work in your, work in your garden. So it's very important. Aside from the Area Resource Council, several other local agencies will be on hand to talk about other services available to residents. Moore says the Rural Development Agency can help families find grants and loans for home repair and other needs. That would be for people who don't have sufficient home and they also have improvement and repairs on, on home. So they, they have programs for that. And so they will be there to assist the people. And then again, like I said, the Natural Resources Conservation Service will be there to help that they have what they call environmental quality incentive program to help with uh, your, uh, in, your environmental, uh, your natural resources, like they could do hoop houses and things like that. And you're gonna uh, have your extension system and of course, the extension system can, like I said, education for living. That free information meeting will be held from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at the Cleburne County Farmers Market on Ross, Ross Street in Heflin. When we come back, local educators are starting a new program this summer that combines class time and playtime. 
Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Local elementary school students who need some extra help bringing up their grades are now eligible for special classes to be taught as part of Aniston's usual summer day camp program starting next month. Three of the city's community centers, Carver, Hodges, and Wiggins, will host the day camps each day from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. starting May 28th. In addition, the city is partnering with several other groups to add the new Summer Adventures in Learning, or SAIL, program to its offerings. Designed for students entering third, fourth, and fifth grades in August, SAIL is aimed at students residing in Calhoun County who are not meeting grade level standards. Students signed up for SAIL must be enrolled in one of the summer day camps, but there will be no additional cost for the program. The classroom components of the SAIL program will be hosted at at the Donahoe School, with transportation being offered from the summer camp locations. The classes will feature three and a half hours of daily instruction using the Bell Excel curriculum. On Fridays, sales students will be trans transported to Camp Lee for outdoor enrichment adventures. Enrollment in the program will be limited to the first 50 registrants. More information is available on the city's website or by calling Anniston Parks and Recreation Department at 256-241-7164 or 256-236-8221. And when we return, an area high school gets a good rating from a national magazine. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. U.S. News & World Report's list of top high schools across the country has ranked Alexandria High School as one of the best schools for 2024. Alexandria claimed the title of number one high school in the Calhoun County school system and is in the top 40% of all high schools in the country. Alexandria High School administrators made that announcement today and they credited their teachers, students and community for that success. And we can tell from the weather that it won't be long until all the schools are releasing the children for summer. It's I getting think, that time. I think it's like about a month now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, people are getting ready for graduation. That's right. Graduation-itis has taken hold. <laughs> it has indeed. And uh, Spring has sprung. Yes, it has. <laughs> Will it keep springing? Let's ask that of John Holder, who's standing by right now in the EAN Weather Center. Mike and Katie, we've got more warm weather, plenty of sunshine, very little rain in the forecast. A very good forecast for East Alabama is coming up next. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. 
Some clouds today, a little bit of sunshine across East Alabama. At the end of the day, that resulted in a high of 76 degrees, about where we should be for this time of year. Our nighttime lows still a little bit below the average, 46 this morning. That will change over the next couple of mornings. Record low temperature, 34. The record high, 90 degrees. And the sun rising now almost at 6 o'clock in the morning. The sun not setting until 722 on your Wednesday night. Speaking of Wednesday night, here's Wednesday night weather on your streets, Jacksonville Street in Weaver, downtown Weaver. Maybe a little bit of fog late tonight. This will be after midnight in the wee hours of the morning, 51 for the low tonight. We'll be in the 60s for most of the evening tonight across East Alabama and in Weaver. Coming up tomorrow, not a bad day whatsoever. Mostly sunny skies. Looks like now that any rainfall we have with the disturbance moving through would be tomorrow night. So plenty of sunshine tomorrow. We're back in the 80s on McKee Street in the city of Piedmont right off Highway 278 on the bypass there. So a splendid day coming up on your Thursday in Piedmont and all across East Alabama. As we look ahead to the start of the weekend, coming up on Friday, heading into the early part of the weekend, Tabor Road in Gadsden, that's right off of Nakwula Falls. That is heading on top of Lookout Mountain, taking you from the falls all the way up into Cherokee County. It is going to be nice and warm. Temperatures in the 80s, and this is going to begin a stretch run of 80s that's going to last for a long time across East Alabama. How long? Here's the seven-day forecast. Nothing but 80s coming the rest of the way for the foreseeable future. 81 on Thursday. Maybe a small chance of rain Thursday night. No big deal with that. Chance of rain about 1 in 3. Friday, more 80s. No rain in the forecast. Saturday, 80s. 82 on Sunday. Those nighttime lows coming from the 50s up into the 60s for nighttime lows. We'll be in the mid-80s by Monday and Tuesday of next week. Some small rain chances, almost summer-like, popping up with the heating of the day. No big deal. Deal with that. No storms expected on Monday and Tuesday. Highs remain in the 80s. Nighttime lows in the 60s. You see that 85 degree temperature on Wednesday. Looking out even beyond seven days, we might have to uh, mention 90s. Yeah, already coming to the forecast as we approach the month of May across East Alabama. We don't see any cool weather coming. 80s and 60s the rest of the way across East Alabama. You know, yesterday we showed you the May forecast for precipitation from the Climate Prediction Center. Now we thought we would show you what's in store for most of the summer. So this is the next quarter. This is what the Climate Prediction Center says is going to happen for May, June, and July. And it looks like maybe a, a little bit wetter summer than we normally deal with here in East Alabama. Above average precip. That's for the entire Southeast, including most of the state of Alabama for next month in May and heading into most of the summer for June and July. Again, not an exact science, but that's what the computer models are showing for most of the summertime across East Alabama. Maybe a little bit wetter than usual. We're behind by almost an inch already on rainfall amounts, so we'll take what rain we can get later on this summer. I'll be back here tomorrow morning with your Thursday day at a glance, 6 a.m., and then I'm back here tomorrow evening We'll have EAN local news, and we'll start looking at that weekend forecast for all of East Alabama. Right now, it's sports time with Namath Pitts going to talk about a local high school quarterback who's making another move at the college level. Here's Namath now with sports. Thanks, John. One local football standout has entered the transfer portal and selected his next destination after one semester in Louisiana. Jim Ogle was once committed to Troy, but then chose Louisiana Monroe. After only a semester at Louisiana Monroe, Jim Ogle entered the transfer portal and will head to Murray State. Jim will be reunited with his dad, who accepted a job with Murray State earlier this year. Jim's father is the co-offensive coordinator and running backs coach for Jody Wright, who is entering his first season at Murray State. Jim had quite the career in senior season at Jacksonville. He threw for 3,095 passing yards and 44 passing touchdowns. He also put together good numbers rushing-wise with 348 rushing yards and a touchdown. Good luck to Jim and Murray State. Isabel Higgins was one of the most talented volleyball players in the area, but she saw injuries prevent her from being 100% that also cut her senior basketball season short. But Isabel will get the opportunity to play volleyball at the next level. Isabel Higgins is headed to Central Maine Community College to play volleyball. Central Maine has a thriving women's volleyball team 
that has recently achieved remarkable success in the Yankee Small College Conference. In the 2023 season, the team clinched its first YSCC regular season title and went on to win the YSCC tournament, dominating with a strong performance. Throughout the season, Central Maine had the tournament's most valuable player, while Kenzie Bills was recognized as the best offensive player. Angelina Leonard, re Leonard received the YSCC Player of the Year Award, and head coach of Central Maine is Kyle Chapman. He was selected as Coach of the Year. The Mustangs had a record of 10-1 during the regular season, including a perfect 10-0 record in conference matches. Their continued strong performances continued in the conference tournament, and Isabel will be a great addition to the Central Maine Community College Volleyball Program, and we wish her the best of luck. That's it for EA and Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thank you for that update, Namath, and we thank you for watching today. You can find us here online every weekday on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or on our website. Just go to the platform of your choice and follow our news, sports, and weather content whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Thursday for your news on your schedule.